everyone, Low Cloudane here, and I just want to give you my quick thoughts on Final Fantasy VII Remake. First and foremost, when they announced that it was being broken up into parts, I was actually very excited about this. I took it as Square Enix really taking the time to rethink the biggest game they ever made. I grew up loving Final Fantasy VII, and overall, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 did not disappoint. Now this game takes the section of Final Fantasy VII where the characters are in Midgar. It's probably just the first two or three hours of the original game, which is amazing that they made an entire game out of just that. Now this caused a few issues, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's first talk about what made this game amazing. And that would be first and foremost, the characters. Wait, give me a minute. No. Why you have to be such a hard ass, bro? I ain't your bro. <laughs> the crew of Avalanche really were just minor characters to say the least in the first game. But in this one, they are fleshed out to an amazing degree, especially Jesse. Jesse became kind of a love interest slightly, um, which was kind of pointed to in the first game. But in this one, it's fleshed out a bit. I've, I've heard a lot of people didn't like that. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was fun. I thought it was cute. Cloud was a badass. I didn't feel... I, a lot of a lot of the personification of Cloud in games like Dissidia and whatnot kind of portray him as this I don't know wimpy guy, wimpy whiny guy, which I never got from the original game, and the remake didn't make him like that. He's kind of awkward, which makes sense I think. Barrett's probably the most consistent character, and he just gets more dialogue. And though I know it was controversial, they did stick to their guns with Barrett being based off of Mr. T, which kind of made him a fun comic relief character, and I appreciated that. Now let's talk about Tifa. Cloud? Is that you? Oh my god, that makeup! And that dress! Nailed it, I know, thank you. Moving on. When the boob controversy went down, I was maybe on the fence there, kind of falling towards those of like, oh great, here we go, here's some more censorship. And then they showed her design and I was like, oh, no, I'm fine with that, she looks great. But she looked more than great. Tifa is by far one of the best characters in Final Fantasy VII Remake Part One. She's cheerful, optimistic, and much more open with her romance with Cloud than in the original game. Some of their interactions I just loved. Specifically, after doing a bunch of her chores, Cloud and Tifa have a conversation which, depending on your answers, changes the dress she wears in Wall Market. I loved this. Speaking of Walmart, or Wall Market, uh, I, I, whatever it's called. Anyway, that was by far the highlight of the game. Cloud and Eris need to go in and find Tifa. In order to do this, they need to sneak into the Dawn's mansion. This leads you on a hunt to get drag for Cloud so that he can sneak in. Now this was a really unique part of the original game, but in this one they took it three steps further. There's an arena battle, additional characters, and a very weird dance scene which, oddly enough, I loved. Now, up to this point, I, I really could not find things I did not like about this game. I mean, seriously, you could just feel the love that they poured into this thing. But then you get about a third into the game. And things start to feel less like that. I'd say it starts right about where the plate falls on Sector 7. In the original game, this was a cold act of murder by Shinra. But in this one, it's dragged out and doesn't quite have that same punch it did in the original game. I mean, many of the people are escaping. It happens really slowly. I don't know. I, I just had a little bit of a problem with it. Of course, at this point, the main goal is to rescue Eris. But the game is dragged on for hours after this, which really just stopped the pacing altogether. And to reiterate, this game had great pacing up to this point. But after this, it's stripped of all urgency. 
I didn't really appreciate a lot of the dungeons that were put in. The two biggest offenders was climbing up to Shinra Tower, and the worst of all of them was Hojo's Lab. Now, as far as gameplay goes, you're given a lot of quests, and for the most part, these quests are great. I mean, they don't stretch the formula, but they're not like boring, run here, do this, for the most part. A lot of them actually have kind of an underlining story to them. And the battle system is near perfect. I loved the direction they went in. Final Fantasy 13 really was not a good game in my opinion, but its battle system had something. Final Fantasy 15 also isn't that great of a game, but it was also onto something as well with its world and it's kind of the how the battles just felt epic, even though they were easy as no one's business. Final Fantasy VII Remake took both these games' battle systems, mixed them together to find what I hope is the norm for Final Fantasy games moving forward. The Materia system comes back, and it's better than ever. At first, you feel like it's probably a little simple, which you think, okay, this is part one, maybe they're easing you into it. But the more you learn about it, the more complex it gets. During my playthrough, I actually had no idea that healing magic could be spread throughout everyone because there was no all materia. I know, stupid, right? Another really cool part of that complexity, when you fight Bahamut, he has this dodgeless attack that just hits you no matter what and you just have to absorb the damage. But little did I know, if you have deadly dodge and good timing, you can dodge his attacks, which is really cool. Now, here is my biggest gripe about the battle system. Overall, it was easy. Magic is broken. Throw the Mithril Sword on Cloud and have Ares spam magic attacks and you can take down anybody. Now, one of my biggest praises about this game is its hard mode. In hard mode, MP is limited. It can't be healed by items or resting. You just slowly gain it back in battle. I love this because it really puts a strain on when you use magic and it's no longer broken. In my opinion, the best way to play is the hard mode. And I really wish they had taken this philosophy for the main game because it's so much more fun. I'm serious, once you beat this game, jump to hard mode and start all over and it feels completely different. Now, let's talk about the ending. I'm gonna avoid spoilers here, but in my opinion, they completely messed up. The motorcycle scene in Battle on the Bridge is awesome, and that's where usually the Midgar section ends. But the developers decided that fans probably weren't going to be too satisfied with an ending like this, so they threw in some extra stuff. And I'm not happy with it. It felt way too big and bombastic, when in reality, the best parts of this game were the more subtle things. Seriously, the ending was just over the top and didn't go with the feel of the entire game. It wasn't enough to really ruin the experience for me, but I definitely ended that game thinking, oh, well, okay. Anyway, overall, Final Fantasy VII Remake was a success in my opinion. In fact, I'd even go as far to say that it's a masterpiece. We've all been really disappointed in Square Enix over the last few years, but in my opinion, this redeemed them. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'd love to hear what everyone else's experience was like. Also, check out my character tier list of the original Final Fantasy VII. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Who in the hell? Hands where I can see them!